trying to market a business? That's right. You, you trying to? Well, stay tuned because we're about to cover the top 10 ways to market your business through the eyes of Senor Miro. Today, today we're busting out Senor Miro for this serious segment uh, through my experiences with running a business, a successful business, and what has worked and what hasn't. But first, but not least, thanks so much to all of you for tuning in, making this podcast amazing, for making it great, for constantly being there, closet listener or not. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to know what more I can provide you. If you can do, uh, do that favor and just email me, go on our website, boss, the number two boss.com, or go to my email, Miro at boss two boss.com. I would love. Uh, to hear more about what you uh, what you have to share, and uh, would love to see how I could possibly help you out, whether it's podcasting or your business, or just talking about life. Please check out PodRiver.com, our media platform company, where we have our host of our other podcasts: the Mac and Black Sports Show, the Local Level Entrepreneurship Show, and Chow Time, a food show coming to you soon. Thanks so much for tuning in, and if you can go to iTunes check out our podcast, leave a review. It means so much to us. We want to keep providing you the best content. And right now we are ranked on iTunes in the top entrepreneurship uh, podcast category. We want to keep it there. We want to make sure we are constantly up there, top 10, top 20, you know what I mean? And the reviews just mean so much to us. Spread the word. We love you all, every single one of you. Let us know what else we can do to help you out. Back to it. Top 10 ways to market your business. Number one, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Uh, you know what? Actually, skip that. Don't pick up the phone. Walk over there. Walk over to a friend, a family member, a colleague. Hopefully, that, uh, that family member doesn't kick you out of the house or it doesn't start up a, a fight or anything. But besides that, you know, maybe skip the family if you have to. But call a friend. Call a colleague. There are people out there that would love to support you and help you. It's not easy to start up a business no matter what it is. I don't care if you're uh, doing something good or very, very bad. Like whatever it is, it is not easy. And usually there are people out there that would love to hop on your journey, to see it through your eyes and to help you out. Maybe they could give you a buck, maybe 10 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks. Maybe they could give you some word of advice or wisdom. Keep it, take it, do it. Number two, <clears throat> social media. Social media is wonderful. You know why? Because it's free. That's right. Free 99, baby. Free 99. You got Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. I mean, that's, that's, those are usually the, the main ones, the, the most traffic ones right now. I'm sure there are other ones. I know there are. Not saying those are bad, but these are the, probably the main ones where you'll get a lot of attention. Especially uh, Facebook. I've noticed Facebook is just hands down, uh, just constantly um, such a great way to talk about your business, to market, to meet other individuals. Oh, I forgot LinkedIn. That's, that's super important. It kind of just depends on what business you're in, what category you're in, what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, each platform has its own specialties and its own weaknesses and um, I guess positives. <laughs> That could be a whole nother episode. I will talk about that another time. But these, the beautiful things about these, these are free. Yes, there are other ways you can utilize them, taking it to the next level by paying. But while they are uh, free, you can just easily set up a page for your business on all these different platforms. Um, you can utilize their software that's at hand, their audience. You can start spreading the word, start getting into those networks. It's free. It's something that a lot of people use. I would say most people have some sort of one of those social media accounts. If you can you know, get somebody on your team, initially start it up yourself because you can't pay someone for doing this. But eventually, once you're, uh, have another, you're busy enough, you do have to pay someone because this, this is very, this, this could be, this is a full-time job. Like social media is a full-time job, especially once you start diving into ads and paying for content and putting out content. Uh, people drive all their business sometimes from social media. Um, like for example, you know, people on, on Instagram or YouTube that have 
a lot of followers. I'm not saying this is the easiest method. It's definitely not. It's a dime a dozen, you know, for sure. But there are ways you can take advantage of it and be sure to make an account, at least in the main ones, the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, perhaps, uh, at least the, the main ones, make an account because it's free and it would be dumb not to because it's, it's a lot. It's really hard to be free, especially free 99. Number three, then you kind of move on. This is also essentially a social platform. Could some call it social media, but these will usually turn into more of a page structure and they might be more specialized. You got certain uh, sites and apps such as Yelp. Home Advisor, Angie's List. Um, if you, you know, if you, th these are just to name a, a few. Especially because my business, I use these, so I I could relate to them. But the, you know, you go a step further if you're in the cooking world. You know, you got the the Grubhub's, the Uber Eats. You know, if you're in a different type of category or whatever it is, transport. You know, there's different apps, there's different platforms for your business that could generate you leads, that could generate you a, another large network of people that are going there, especially, especially just for your business and what you offer. And these usually start out as free and they help you with your search, with your search, with your search, <laughs> your website, um, searching your business online. Uh, so all these platforms, cause your info is already there in their system and their system is a well-known system like such as Yelp. So that's going to show up pretty high on Google which in turn will you know, help generate traffic back and forth to your website and your company. So it's, it's something you have to take advantage of, especially the free features. And then if you like any of them, be sure to you know, check out their paid options. They got ads and you know, at the end of the day, if you pay money, you will usually get better results. I'm not saying that any of these platforms, you know, take that into consideration at all, even with their organic feed, but you know, a lot of times, you pay an extra dollar, you're a bigger company. Sometimes, you know, you just happen to show up a little bit higher on the list. Not saying it happens or anything, but something to consider. Number four, guerrilla marketing. All right. This is, this is the fun stuff here. Guerrilla marketing, and it, it could be anything, um, anything mass related, produced. Uh, something typical that a lot of you probably have seen are yard signs. You see yard signs for apartments, for uh, different uh, delivery, maybe companies. You see those, those, those damn signs everywhere on the posts. We will buy your house. We will buy your car. The, we'll take free houses. Donate your house. You know, you, those, those are pretty much going out into the masses. The more that's out there, that's, you know, not, not, saying, not saying all of it's legal because sometimes you can't put things in random places unless someone allows you to um, and you're just going to tick off a lot of people, but that is guerrilla marketing, you know, putting up flyers, handing up brochures all over the place, uh, leaving them, you know, everywhere you go, uh, putting up stickers on places though, you know, be respectful as well. See, you know, get approval first, see that the building, that the organization, that the event will allow this kind of behavior there, you know, ask people knock during their doorbells, you know, usually, Think about you know, politicians when, when campaigning is going on, they will ring your doorbell, ask, you know, would you mind if we put this yard sign up here in front of your house, for example, that's, that's the right way to do it. And, and also with that, if you do it that, that way, those signs will tend to stay, you know, otherwise those things get pretty pricey, especially if you get the nice, you know, big ones, the full colored ones, they get pretty pricey. And if you want those things to stay on for a longer period of time, talk to the people that are in control of where that sign will be put up and be nice to them because then they'll let, they'll let you keep it there longer and maybe offer them, I don't know, give them five bucks, <laughs> buy them lunch, give them something cool, you know, any, a small gift card, you know, maybe give them a $5 a Starbucks gift card after letting you put a bunch, uh, you know, it, it, cause think about it, you know, one person calls from that sign and all your money is made back. You can't really go wrong with that. I mean, that's guerrilla marketing for you. A lot of companies utilize it. Politicians utilize it all the time. Um, so that's that's one method. Number five, tchotchkes. This definitely wins my award for a favorite word. 
of the whole entire program, tchotchkes. Um, that, that could be uh, just little little things that you get that a lot of times they are pretty pointless. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I have any here around, around me. I do, but I can't reach them. But for example, here we go. We got a pen. Oops, we got a pen and it's a, a realtor's pen. So uh, this realtor, I don't want to mention her name, but it's a Chicago realtor. And I use this pen because it is a pretty nice heavy duty have, you know, pen and it still works. That that's a big one. It still works. And I remember her name because I see this. And this is actually a good reminder because I haven't seen this pen in a while. I should probably call her. So these are tchotchkes, little things you give away. Maybe you send them in the mail, you give them away at events. It could be pens, chapstick, stress balls, mints, magnets, you know, the, the, the little things that a lot of people could use or a lot of people could throw away. You know, it, it's a hit or miss. It's a hit or miss. It's kind of, you're playing the numbers game with this one, just like guerrilla marketing. You're hoping that enough people see your product, your name, and that they will remember you and that they might call you. That is essentially the end game. It could be pricey. It could be pricey depending where you buy it. Uh, you know, if you're giving away thousands and thousands of pens, you know, they, 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 they do get pricey. But the, you have to kind of put a dollar, you know, you have to see, you have to strategically also plan it out. Like say you're giving all these pens out or all these to a certain type of customer or a certain group of people, maybe put a different phone number on them or something. You want to be able to know your return on investment. If you put $10,000 into these pens, for example, maybe put a different number on the pen. That way, when customers call, you will know that this pen is working because this phone number is only out on these pens or it's only out in this geographic area or there's a separate email there or something whatever it is, but it's a good way to keep track of whether or not something works. And cause you don't want to, you know, these things will get costly real quick. Any, anything physical that you have to give away, uh, it usually, you know, involves time, money. So it's all, all things to take into consideration. Number six, kind of back into the digital age, your website, your website. I want to say it has to be probably your most important thing you can do. Besides, you know, hitting up the people you know, collaborate, you know, hitting up your family, friends to get you started. Without a website, especially if you're looking to do more than one or two jobs a year, um, and it's maybe for people that you already know and trust. But if, but if you're actually trying to grow a business that you're looking to work with more people than just your family and friends, you need a website. You need a website, hands down. Those. Those little put together websites do not work anymore. You know, your website says a lot about you, about your business, about how professional you are. It really does. There's lots of great websites uh, out there, you know, hosts, like you got the Wix, you got WordPress. Um, th there's just so many different ones uh, that you can search that will help you that already have templates set up that you could easily for, you know, there's usually a couple hundred dollars like tops and you can get a whole website going. And usually a lot of times these look amazing, like, and they're already there, kind of made for you. you. Just put in all the wording, the different pictures, choose the templates. Yeah, but if you are taking it to a whole, you know, to the next level, I would definitely recommend hiring someone, someone like uh, my partner, Intrinsic uh, Chicago, uh, Intrinsic Marketing. It's a company that does websites. But aside from them, uh, there are so many other ones out there as well. And with someone that actually specializes in website making and hosting, you will usually get a much better product at the end of the day. You know, they'll be making a site from scratch. They'll be doing something that they specialize in. You know, we, we, you, unless, unless we are the website making business that we are in, I'd probably stay away because you specialize in what you're about to do for a reason. You're not paying someone else to do your job. And that usually goes the same way. You know, you want to pay the professionals. You want to pay the people that know how they're going to be able to get the best bang for your buck with the website and to look the most professional. That is very important. And with your website, you know, it's something where most people will go. Most people that meet you, that see your business card, your brochure, your flyer, they won't, that yes, unless your business is like strictly social media driven, they, they, there will still be a site because people will be like, ah, you know, I got to check the site. Is it real? Is it, uh, is it you know, 
SSL approved? Is it will it will it show up as a security risk on my phone and I won't be able to open it? So make sure you know that's an important feature as well. You have to usually pay extra to get your site uh, security systems and stuff all in place to make sure everybody could open your site on any given platform that they uh, choose to view it on. And with that, with your website, you got the SEO, you got AdWords, funnels, lead magnets. Uh, these are all topics that I could talk about for for a long time that are very specialized in and it's just out of the scope of the show but it's essentially to help get your website ranked higher on google which is the number one platform out there like hands down by far don't even like come on when was the last time you searched something on yahoo i mean yes sorry yahoo if you want to advertise on my show i will gladly take you but not many people will search for something on yahoo just saying so you know, being ranked high on Google, getting people to actually find your site from other sources, funneling into your site, for example, that uh, it's all very important things um, that, that grow your business and that show your credibility because everybody has a website. Everybody. Like think of any major business that doesn't. It'd be, it'd be kind of awkward and weird. So you know, websites aren't going away anytime soon. Definitely the number one most important thing, I would say. Uh, to market your business. So you don't have to go crazy, but eventually you do, at least somewhat. <laughs> Number seven, your local chambers, chambers of commerce specifically, and networking groups. This is another awesome way of networking your business. This is kind of how I started. Besides, besides calling uh, the family, the friends, getting the website done, one of the first, very first things, um, as soon as I announced to the world, I was doing doing this little thing called business. Senor Mira was doing something called business. They told me to go to these events and I was introduced to a few. I was introduced to BNI's. Uh, shout out to Dr. Ivan Meissner, who was, who was the founder of BNI, who was on my podcast uh, last year. BNI is Business Network International. It's a paid group that usually um, it encompasses one individual from each different uh, industry. And you meet usually once a week, I believe, and uh, you refer each other business. It's a very close knit group. Um, great, great support system. Uh, that that's one way. Uh, BNIs. You have all the different. Um, you have Facebook groups. If you start up a Facebook group, you can organize meetups that way. Events, uh, meetups. Actually, the actual system platform uh, app itself called Meetup. Meetups. It's 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 amazing. Um, check that out. You know, you get people together that have the similar passions and things uh, or there's charity events. Uh, there, there's just so many different groups that you can be a part of. I initially joined a chamber right away, all right off the bat. A chamber is amazing because it's all local businesses of all types, all shapes and forms. And you are pretty much there pitching yourselves to, you know, your business to each other, networking, talking back and forth. Uh, it's, it's usually people out there that, especially because it's a paid group too, when it's these paid groups, people tend to pay attention a little bit more. They tend to want to make sure they provide value to hopefully receive value. And there's, there's usually a lot of collaboration. You know, It's not like somebody's free groups where it's a little harder because people just show up and, and go through the motions. And, and uh, sometimes people just don't take them as seriously because they are free. But there's a lot of different groups out there. Uh, I've talked about networking before. I've, I'll talk more about networking, uh, the power of it. but that is that that's as far as I'll go at the moment because I will talk for days and I need to hurry up. <laughs> Number eight, collaboration with other businesses and communities. This one's important too. It's another way to grow your business. Think about it. You know, say you are starting up a soda uh, uh, delivery company. You're going to deliver a new stream line of sodas, some kind of, you know, awesome, cool, zero sugar, sugar, vegan, uh, product. Uh, maybe it contains veggies and it's got protein and it's like game changing. You probably want to partner with some kind of distribution company, maybe, uh, a trucking company, someone that has all types of connections to other stores or warehousing locations, depending on, you know, what kind of structure you're setting yourself up with. If you're going to business to business, business to consumer. So you want to find other companies that you can partner with, um, maybe other communities, uh, maybe it's some not-for-profits, but if there's already somebody else out there 
that has skin in the game that will benefit from a relationship with you. It's so, you don't want to be recreating the wheel. You don't, you know, making these networks, these, these different distributions, uh, all this is, it's not easy. A lot of times people took years and a long time to build up uh, certain parts of their business. And yes, I'm not going to say it's going to come free. Nobody's just going to open up everything to you and just hand it because they worked hard. But if you can show them your value and why they should work with you, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to team up with other companies and work together, especially when, when there's a bigger team and another bigger team, like usually that will form an ever, even bigger pie. You know, think about it that way. It's always a lot better to have bigger group, bigger collaboration, new ideas will come about. And if it doesn't work out, they'll at least know about your business. Maybe they'll introduce you to somebody else where it might work. Boom. Number nine, present about your business, host events, sponsor, booths, tables, and events. All right. That's a, that's a mouthful. This one's good too. It's fun. It shows a lot of credibility, leadership, and pretty much makes you a source out there in the market, makes you more credible. If you can talk about what you're doing, you have actual good hard evidence and you have confidence, it's going to show you as an industry expert in the subject, whether you're a doctor of the spine or a junk removal expert, decluttering expert, you make the best bombist shakes, uh, you know, protein shakes in the world, or you make baby baby clothes. If you could talk about those and show, you know, how your product is better, but not necessarily show why your product is better because you don't want to come out there and just pitch people. That's a major turnoff. But you can show and teach people the ways that your industry works, what you guys are doing, what you're not doing, what others are doing, what trends are happening. If you could show them the ways, you can talk about the expert that you are to other people. It is going to go a long, long way, and people will come back to you because. Why wouldn't you want to work with someone or buy a product or use do a service from that that person, that company, where they clearly know what they're talking about, what they're doing? And another way w- would be kind of just you know going off of that, not just speaking, but hosting some events, having different sponsorships at events. Um, there's nothing like your face, your name on something, on something where a lot of people come and visit and attend. It just shoots your credibility through the roof. You know, if you are hosting an event or you are at an event where there's 500, 1,000 people and your face, your name is right there, your booth is right there, your product is talked about on stage. Like, yes, people will run over to you. None of this is cheap. It's not easy. This is like next level, next level type of stuff because at this point, you're usually probably paying or you're very well connected and people love you and you have become a true expert, true expert in your industry. But this is definitely a way to really go from like here to here, like accelerate big time, you know, five, five X, something you're doing. Number 10, last but not least, give products and services away. That's right. Give them away. Give coupons. But most importantly, give value. If your product or service is shit, you know, nobody wants that. Nobody wants shit. They don't. You know, we flush that, we flush that down the toilet. We do. But if your product, if your service gives value, makes my life, your life, somebody else's life easier, then why wouldn't someone, after they use it once or had that experience, do it again? You know, most things you want to do more and more. Maybe if you like go skydiving, usually that, that might be a one and done. Well, for some, no, but most things, right? You will do them again. If you buy toilet paper once and you had an awesome experience wiping your butt, you're probably going to buy it again. If you had the most amazing coffee ever and you were jolted out of your mind, running around like crazy and got so much work done, you'll probably buy that coffee again. Whatever it is, if you provide value and if you can give it to someone for free, or give it to them at a discount, a coupon early on, just to get them in to try it out, to you know, let them just give you a chance. And there's no reason why they won't keep coming. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. Another episode of Boss to Boss. Check out our website, podriver.com and boss2boss.com. 
Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Love you all. You all mean so much to us. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it going. 2020, new year, new decade. <laughs> Who do I sound like? Who? Honestly, email me, message me, let me know. Who do I sound like? Ah, uh, love it. Crush it. Talk the rest of your, uh, crush the rest of your week, y'all. I look forward to everything to come. It's going to be fun. But the real answer, though, you don't have to email me about it. I'm just Senor Miro. And that's right. We talked about the top 10 ways to market your business. Have an awesome week, y'all. That is all for this episode of Boss to Boss. Your next step is to visit boss2boss.com, where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step. Again, that is boss, the number two, boss.com. And remember, the time is now.